I'm Sherry Hobb, and this video is going to show you how I use a UV film to provide a resist for metal prior to etching. The great thing about UV resist is that it gives you the precision you can't get from other resist methods. And so let's get started and I'll show you how to use this great material. One of the challenges you will face as you're etching on metal, whether it be electrical or chemical etching, is finding the perfect resist to use. And what a resist is, is a resist covers the part of the metal that you don't want to etch, and then the chemical or electrical etching will etch the background area. And with different resists, typically what happens is they can flake off after time, or they won't pick up fine lines that you want. And so I'm going to show you a UV resist, which is excellent for etching. And it holds up very well over a long period of time and gives you perfect detail. And it doesn't come off until you take it off. So let me get started and show you how this is used. To apply a UV resist, we're going to prepare our metal. And in this case, I have copper. And then we're going to put the film on the copper and cover it with the transparency. And then UV light will shine through the transparency to seal the film where, it, where the light shines through, and this will give us our resist for the metal. And so to get a good transparency, you want to print your design on a piece of transparency film, and it doesn't matter if it's a laser or an inkjet, either one is fine, but the idea is you wanna have a very high DPI, a good resolution, so you have nice solid black and clear lines because if you can see through it and it looks slightly gray then the light's going to pass through and not give you the perfection you're looking for in your design. Before beginning the process I want to sand my metal really well with either a 600 or 400 grit wet dry sandpaper making sure that I put a bit of a tooth or a roughness on the surface so that the film adheres really well. And you could use a 320 grit if you need to, especially on something like um, brass, because brass is a harder metal, and so it's a little bit harder for the film to adhere. So after you've sanded and cleaned your metal, you can use a little rubbing alcohol and water to clean this off to make sure all the dust is removed. You're ready to apply your UV film. Now the UV film needs to be in a cool, dark place because heat and light will expose and destroy your film. The way the film is sold is it comes in a black protective plastic coating like this to protect it from the light, and you'll want to work in the dark with a bug light on. And don't worry, the bug light gives you plenty of light. And so this light bulb that I have in my fixture right here is a bug light and it emits a yellow uh, light that won't expose the UV film. And that's really great to use because then I can see what I'm doing in the dark and everything's perfect that way. Before I open my film, I'm going to make sure that I have my bug light on and then I can turn the house lights off and make sure that that's my only source of light. So if you're in your home studio, that would be the time that you would turn your bug light on before you open and remove your film from the package. With your bug light on, I've cut a piece of the film from the roll, and you'll notice that it has a curve where it was on the roll. You want to remove the underside of the protective film. This UV film has a clear protective coating on both sides of the film. And the best way to do this is to use a piece of packing tape that's very sticky. And actually, this is the hardest part of the whole process is just catching that edge. And so what you're going to do is just sort of grab the edge of the film and hoping that your sticky tape grabs it and it starts to peel back the, the protective coating. And this may take a few tries, but you get the hang of it. So peel that back, and then we're ready to put the uncoated side of the film onto our prepared metal. And I wanna give it just a quick couple spritz of a very light mist of distilled water and then you place the film right on the metal. And then I'm using just a credit card type um, card here to smooth out the bubbles and make sure that that film is well adhered. I got a ripple here, I wanna remove that just by using this like a squeegee to get all the bubbles out. 
And you can kind of tilt it in your bug light to make sure that you can see where the bubbles are there. Make sure you get them out. You don't need very much water, just a, a light spritz of that. And then I'm going to dry this with an ordinary hair dryer. After you've applied your film and then used your card to squeegee it flat onto the metal without any bubbles, use an ordinary hair dryer to heat set the film onto the metal. And I set this hair dryer on a medium setting and I hold it for just a minute or so until the metal starts to be just a little uncomfortable to touch. It's just a little too hot for me to handle and then I know I've got it about the right temperature. After my plate has been dried with the hair dryer, I'm ready to put my transparency over the film. Now remember, there's still some protective coating on this side, but that's good right now because then I won't scratch it when I'm working. So I've got a transparency here and I can just lay it over the film. And remember, wherever the black is, that is what's going to etch. Wherever the clear is, that's what's going to be um, covered with a resist from the film. So that's how you remember it. And you also can flip your transparency this way or this way, depending if you want your text in reverse. Say if you're going to be making a plate for metal clay or clay, and then you want it to be reversed when you uh, use it for a texture plate. Your transparency can be practically any design, but like I said earlier, make sure that you have a nice clear black line art so that the light knows where to pass through and that you can have some crisp detail. Another idea is you could use an ordinary uh, permanent pen like this and draw um, freeform art onto your transparency and use that for your resist. So that would be a great way to transfer some handmade art. Okay, we're ready to go now. So I've got my transparency. I'm laying it on top of the film on my metal and I'm going to put it between a piece of acrylic. So I have a flat piece here, and this is just going to make a nice little sandwich so that it keeps my transparency nice and flat while I'm shining the light through the transparency. And I've got a clear piece on top, and this base could be anything you want it to be. So I've got the clear acrylic, and the reason I'm not using glass is because that might reflect the light back, so a, a piece of acrylic is good to use. And I have a couple of binder clips here, put one on one side and one on the other. And that holds it nice and tight that's going to pass under our UV lamp. Now theoretically you could put this out in the sun or any other light source, but you may not be able to gauge how long to leave it to get a good resist. So I'm using a little 9 watt UV lamp here and I'm going to place my design under here. And I know with this particular bulb, with this small piece of copper, that it's going to take about 30 seconds of exposure. If you have a larger piece of metal and a, um, a light source that's farther away because you can't fit it under something like this, you're going to have to do a test piece and see how long to leave it. Now for a test piece, what I use is I will, I will um, mark on a blank piece of metal time fragments here and I will move a card along as I expose it for different time increments under the UV light. And then when I develop this, I'll know which one is the proper time with my light source. And I'll talk more about that as I'm showing you how the film is removed when it's developed. The best way to time your exposure is to use a little stopwatch like this. And this helps because even a second or two can throw things off. And you may have to experiment because every bulb is just slightly different. So I've set this for 30 seconds because I know it works with my lamp here with this piece of metal. And I'm going to simultaneously turn on my stopwatch and turn on the light. And it's gonna count down for 30 seconds. Now while this is counting down, make sure that you look away from the light or cover this with a towel or something so that you're not looking at the UV light which can damage your eyes over time. After I've exposed my film, I can remove these clips and remove the transparency. And you can already see where some of the design has uh, exposed from the light there. So you'll want to use your packing tape again and try to snag the corner. And you can peel your protective film off. Now you can see where I lost a little of the film here on the edge. That's probably because I either didn't sand it well enough or I didn't apply the film quite tightly enough. 
but the rest will be fine under the etching. So now it's ready to go into my, my developing solution. After my film's been exposed to the UV light, I'm ready to develop it. And this developing solution is made with a mixture of soda ash, sodium carbonate, and it's about 15 grams per liter of distilled water. And I mix, and that's just about two scant tablespoons of the soda ash. I mix a little of that in some warm water, about a three-fourths cup of warm water to start with, and then I fill it up with the rest of the liter to make one liter total after that soda ash is dissolved. So now we're ready to drop it in to our solution. And this is going to stay in here. Set your timer for nine minutes. And this is going to develop for nine minutes. I'm going to set my timer for nine minutes for the developing on this plate. However, after about oh seven or eight minutes, I'll put my gloves on and I'll start scrubbing the surface with this abrasive sponge to see if the film starts to remove. And wherever the light didn't shine through, it will feel like a gel-like substance and the, the um, film will start to remove where you want to expose the plate for etching. This piece has been in the developing solution for exactly nine minutes. So now I'm starting to scrub the surface and you will see that it becomes clear. You can see where the copper is shining through and the blue, the light blue area is coming off with the scrubbing. And that's what you're looking for. You want to make sure that the dark blue stays in place and the copper is nice and clear. And then you know you've exposed it and developed it for just the right amount of time. Now what I've noticed as I've taught classes, the more plate you put in this solution, it becomes weaker. And sometimes you have to add a little bit more soda ash or maybe it comes off you know, before the nine minutes and you may want to make your solution a little weaker. You have to experiment with this, but again, about 15 uh, 15 grams to a liter of water is a good rule of thumb to work with. So after I've scrubbed all of the background area off, then I'm going to take this piece and I'm going to soak it and dip it into some white distilled vinegar and that will help stop the process of the developing and then rinse it in cool water and then you're ready to etch the piece. After you've rinsed your piece off with vinegar and water, you're ready to set it again with the light. And this will just harden the plastic that's on the metal. So put your piece back under your UV lamp for about two minutes, or you can set it outside on a cookie tray for about 15 minutes just to let the light seal or harden the plastic, the film. And it will turn sort of a purple, like a blue purple color. Now this piece has been etched already. So after you've created your resist, you can keep these in a drawer and keep them in the dark because they will continue to harden and the film could become brittle and crack off over time. But you're ready to etch at any time after this process. So after you've etched, and you can see the incredible detail I have here, it's only etched where the film wasn't applied and the film stays on. It's remarkably well. It's really even hard to scratch off, which is one of the best parts about UV film. So I've etched this piece, and then to get this film off, I'm going to throw it back in the solution, into the developing solution, and let it soak overnight, or four to five hours at least, and this will just float off. All of this film will float off of the surface. And your final result will look like a beautifully etched piece of copper with perfection, which the UV film gives you. Now, a couple of things about troubleshooting. With this process, probably your main obstacles are just paying attention to your timing and that you do each step in order and don't forget a step. Here's a piece of film where it was overexposed and you can see that the lines started to fill in. It becomes very muddy looking and that means that too much light for too long of time was on this piece. So you'll want to back off and maybe try your test strip on the metal to make sure that you don't have it fill in. If you didn't have the light on long enough, what will happen is your film during the developing process will start to flake off. And that can be for several reasons. It could be either underdeveloped or maybe your metal wasn't sanded well enough. Here are a few examples of pieces I've etched using the UV film. These doves have incredible little detail around these vines and around each wing, and you can see where the UV film 
covered each of those areas perfectly so I could get precision on that. On this one, I have these tiny little thorns in this rose vine that are showing up very well with that, with that precise um, line quality that you get with the UV film. Even though UV film takes quite a few steps, it's well worth the effort when you see the final result. One of the projects I really love to do with um, UV film on metal is taking a photograph and converting it into a black and white image and then transferring that to the metal. That gives you fine detail that you wouldn't get any other way and it just looks beautiful when you've transferred a, a vintage photo onto your metal. There's another technique that I use it for and um, that is of making a texture plate that's used for other clays such as metal or, or um, polymer clay, for example. And what you do is after you've um, made your texture, then you just press your clay, your metal clay or whatever type, into the surface. And that will give you every little detail as though the metal clay were etched itself. So you can see that there are a lot of uses for this and I hope you'll enjoy the technique and that this video has been helpful for you. If you'd like to find out how to purchase the product or more examples of, of art using this technique, look at the link below.